This video is brought to you by Microids. Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take an extended look at the remake of 13 and see how it compares both visually and from a gameplay perspective to the original classic version of the game from nearly 20 years ago. For those of you unfamiliar with this title, 13 is a narrative-driven first-person shooter, first developed by Ubisoft Paris way back in 2003. In it, players assume the role of Number 13, a man with amnesia who is accused of having assassinated the President of the United States, and is forced to evade the FBI as he uncovers a massive government conspiracy. The game is based almost entirely on a series of old 80s graphic novels written by Jean Van Ham, including its story, its characters, and its unique comic book-inspired art direction. And despite its initial lukewarm reception, it's since become a cult classic. Fast forward to 2020, and a Maltese studio called Play Magic attempted to revive the long dormant property, remaking the game from the ground up using the Unity engine. But the end result was a complete disaster, with that iconic comic book art style being sidelined, and a plethora of other bugs making the experience nigh unplayable. Unhappy with the state of the game, a separate studio called Tower 5 was brought on to help right the ship, and have recently released a massive overhaul to the remake so massive that many have referred to this as a remake of the remake. And while it still isn't perfect, the sentiment towards the game has become significantly more favorable. So for this analysis, we're going to take a look at that original classic game and this most recent update to the remake. Both games are being played on the PC, with the visual settings set to their highest available values at a native 4K resolution. Though settings like motion bar have been disabled in the latest game to provide cleaner image captures. Also, before we begin, I'd like to thank the game's publisher, Microids, for sponsoring this video. If you end up liking what you see here and want to give the game a try for yourself, you can pick it up today for either PS5, Xbox Series X, Nintendo Switch, or the PC for $40, using the link that I provided below. Alright, so let's kick this comparison off by first looking at some character models, starting with the lifeguard that saves 13 at the very beginning. Right away, we can already identify a plethora of changes mainly the sizable increase to the character's poly count, and overall complexity, all while still maintaining that unique cel-shaded style. Thick black lines are used to outline all the character's most defining features, mainly her hair, eyes, lips, collarbone, and the base silhouette, whereas in the classic version, these lines are mainly reserved for just the silhouette alone, as lighter toned lines are used for finer details instead. Assisting this further is the uptick in the color tones used for the lifeguard's skin color, with darker tan, pink, and red all adding a more perceivable depth to the character's face. Unlike the original version where only about two or three different color tones were used, making for a much flatter presentation. Because this art style is consistent throughout the course of both games, the same observations can be made with every other included character model as well, as they all have better geometry, more detail, and a lot more color variety, all while still maintaining the character's core features and comic book inspired art style. The only real exception to this is number 13's ally, Jones, who's not only been given much lighter skin, but has a completely different facial structure and hairstyle as well, essentially transforming the character into someone else entirely. At first, I thought this was an odd choice, abandoning the source material to some degree. But after looking up what Jones was initially portrayed to look like, it's clear that the reason for this change was to bring her appearance more in line with her comic book counterpart, rather than the design that Ubisoft had gone with back in 03. The animations that are associated with all of these characters have also been completely redone. They now feature much more expressive facial animations, better translating their current emotions, and there's even new added animations like characters handing over keys and other objects to the player, only further adding to the immersion. It's nothing necessarily groundbreaking, but it's an improvement over the classic title nonetheless. Moving on, let's talk environments. 13 offers a surprisingly varied experience throughout the course of its campaign, with a plethora of distinctive locations to help keep the experience feeling fresh from level to level. Interestingly, despite the characters and weapon models being very clearly presented with a cell shaded design element, the environments in the original 13 aren't nearly as stylized. Sure, many of the key objects in every scene are given that silhouetted appearance, but there's also many background details like mountains, structures, and vegetation that appear like they would in any other early 2000s 3D game. 
The remake addresses this head on, with practically every object model in the game world being fully silhouetted, making every environment really pop on the screen. And while this art style certainly lends itself to feeling more like a comic book, it does in some instances have a detrimental effect on translating the world to the player, as areas with increased geometric complexity, like these canyons, can be visually overwhelming when compared to the simplistic design used before. In addition to the increased cell shading, the environments in the remake are also substantially more detailed overall. There's dozens of new decorative objects at any given time, taking areas that were previously barren and flushing them out with more rocks, boulders, trees, grass, and various other scene-appropriate props. Take the lifeguard station from the start of the game, for example. Before, this back room had a few decorative objects spread throughout, including a radio, a low-textured map, and a shelf populated by a few rescue buoys. The remake not only preserves all of these objects, but it also adds in several more, including some decorative tiki masks, flowers, trash cans, a lifeguard duffel bag, surfboard, and curtains. Then there's all the texture maps that have been applied to these objects and surfaces that are much higher fidelity, all while still retaining that light cartoony feel of the original. And that's all only within the first room in the game. Once you venture outside into the opening pier area, you'll find dozens of other changes in the environment, with ropes that will actually sway in the wind, extra debris along the boardwalk, new light fixtures, and vastly improved scenic backdrops. Even the underwater sections have been redone, adding in dense coral reefs into areas that most players probably won't even see. As far as the level layout goes, each level in the remake is designed to match up with the original almost one-to-one. -one. In some instances, there's even entirely new areas added in, like this small storage room connecting the FBI building to a nearby derelict structure. Typically, these changes seem to benefit the flow of the level designs, more properly translating how such abrupt transitions like this are made. But there are a few times where I feel the changes don't seem to benefit the gameplay quite as well. Some changes even make previously impressive overlooks appear less impressive, like this waterfall section, where the longer path before leading up to the waterfall itself has been reduced in size, making the waterfall feel less prominent as a result. Or this church courtyard, that because of its increased length, makes the church in the background appear much smaller by comparison, despite standing in the same approximate location. But these examples are few and far between. Most of the scenes I compared look vastly superior in the updated version of the game. And thanks to the updated on-screen objective marker, areas that were previously unclear where to proceed are now explained more properly, making for a more polished experience. Next, we have lighting. Like with the original version of the game, the lighting in the 13 remake remains completely baked in and fairly straightforward. You won't find any ray tracing, global illumination, or even true volumetrics here. What you do get, though, are some really interesting combinations of color tones and bloom that often transform the mood of each respective scene drastically. Take this scene at the start of the game, for example. In the original game, the sun appears to be setting along the water, while soft white fluorescent lights glow against the surface of small wooden structures. The remake appears to also take place around the same time, but the direction of the sun has been relocated so that it can be seen later when fighting alongside the docks. And the color tone has a drastically warmer tone overall, more indicative of a beachside sunset. Interestingly, while the remake does still have a few lights turned on along the pier, most of the lights are turned off and the ones that are turned on seem to be casting an unusual red glow via these distinctive cones of light, an artistic choice that seems to be done to match the level's warmer color tone. On the flip side, we have this frozen cliffside sequence partway through the game that, instead of featuring a warm red and purple fog effect like before, now looks relatively clear and sports a much colder blue tone instead. It's a stylistic choice that I think works in favor of each respective level, as it helps to accentuate those unique characteristics of these biomes that players will experience throughout the course of the game. Another cool addition to the remake are these new spotlight effects, that instead of creating a relatively opaque beam of light like before, now appear completely transparent, but add a sort of gradient yellow filter to objects behind it, showing only their silhouettes. Next, we have shadows. Because of the game's art style, it inherently doesn't make use of very many shadows for its various objects and character models. Most objects in the environment don't cast a shadow at all, 
with the only exceptions being larger objects like buildings, trees, vehicles, and characters. And while the player does feature some shadowing along his arm, it's a special stylized shadow effect that, with the additional shader work, looks much better in the remake. Next up, we have effects. Next to the character models, the effects are probably one of 13's most important features to his visual direction. Every muzzle flash, explosion, and punch to the face is accompanied by a stylized cartoonish effect on screen, with crudely drawn flash effects and onomatopoeia appearing on screen just like you'd see in a comic book panel. Explosions near a player will even shake the player's screen, revealing the white borders of the current comic panel that the action is taking place in. In the remake, most of these effects have been exaggerated slightly more to really help sell that illusion. Muzzle flashes are now more frequent, and even more cartoony than before. And effects like fire that were previously given a somewhat realistic appearance are now stylized like everything else, making for some really cool silhouetted flame effects. Explosion sprites that appeared on screen are also much larger now, though that cool white border screen shake effect appears to have been removed. Then there's the water, that's gone from a rudimentary parallax effect that most games at the time were using, to something more stylized, with exaggerated ripples spiraling along the surface, and some light wave simulation to help add more depth. It's still very simple, with no form of interaction outside of shooting the surface or swimming around underwater, but it at least matches the artistic tone of the rest of the environment. One aspect that I was very disappointed to see removed, however, are the weather effects. For whatever reason, this remake seems to avoid replicating any of those great weather effects featured so prominently before. This includes the dense blizzard shortly after the railcar breaks loose, and the distant storm effects and light rain when sneaking around the jungle compound. These would have been really cool to see brought back, especially with the post-processing effect being applied to things like raindrops or snowflakes to help drive that art style further. But instead, we see mostly clear weather in the mountain levels and no sign of rain at all in the jungles. Fog has also been mostly removed, along with the simulated volumetric effects like light rays that would pour in through the windows in the church. Though, because there's more bloom and other lighting-based effects at play, this seems to have been more of a creative choice to keep the game looking as cartoony as possible. Now, before we get into our final sound comparison section, I also wanted to detail a few other major changes that have been made to various aspects of the gameplay design that really sets the gameplay experience apart from the original game. First off, in keeping with the design of shooter games today, the 13 remake now allows players to sprint, making it much easier to get out of dodge when in a dangerous situation. And to keep this balance with the mostly identical level designs, it appears the developers have also slowed down the base speed of the character when not sprinting by about 50%, essentially requiring the sprint maneuver in order to be as effective. Though this inadvertently slows the gameplay down a bit, as players still can't aim or shoot while they're sprinting around. As for the combat, the developers have added in a new aim down sight mechanic for all the weapons, making it much easier to aim with precision. Players can also still hip fire if they like, though it seems bullet spread and accuracy isn't nearly as reliable in this mode anymore, effectively requiring the ADS for any distant targets. Personally, I think these changes are fine but I would like to see improvements made to the visual recoil of the weapon when ADSing, as the lack of recoil currently feels inconsistent with the hipfire animations and the sound that the weapon makes. The 13 remake also sees a plethora of quality of life improvements to things like inventory management and gadget use. Instead of having to scroll through a list of acquired weapons, for example, players can now press and hold the inventory button to bring up a weapon wheel, which can be used to more easily select the weapon that they want. Gadgets also no longer need to be manually selected, as they're now context sensitive, with button prompts appearing at locations for things like zip lines and grapple points, making it much easier to stay focused on the action. The grappling hook is also much easier to control this time, as the small right handed controller that was previously required to move up and down has been removed, meaning players can raise and lower themselves all while still maintaining control of their firearm to defend themselves. Other context-sensitive prompts have also been added for actions like grabbing keycards, opening doors, breaking glass, and even performing stealth takedowns, which previously were slightly more cumbersome. One change that I'm not particularly fond of, though, are the new preset level loadouts and new item placement. In the classic game, 
Players would collect weapons throughout the course of the game, which, unless otherwise confiscated as part of the story, would transfer between levels. But in the remake, each level follows a sort of use-it-or-lose-it mentality, where weapons and supplies are not carried over between levels, but rather assigned at the start depending on what's needed for that section. It certainly adds a bit of challenge, needing to deal with low ammunition and having to recover weapons from enemies throughout the course of each stage. But it also makes some areas less fun to play through, as you're now limited to only pistols and shotguns, whereas before you might have had an assault rifle to start. Then we have the unintended bugs, mainly involving the AI. While most of the enemies behave as you'd expect, there's a few key enemies, mainly bosses, that don't appear to be behaving properly right now. Instead of chasing players around the room, for example, this boss seems to stand in place more often, and now gets easily stunned, only forcing him to stand in place longer. You can essentially melt every boss you encounter because of this, which I feel was definitely not the intention. One AI character I encountered wouldn't even react to any projectiles at all, effectively forcing me to use a stealth takedown on her or risk failing the mission from her raising an alarm. And last but not least, there's this section, shortly after the submarine level, where the player is meant to jump into the water and fight their way through an army of scuba divers using a harpoon gun. For whatever reason, this section no longer features a single enemy, effectively making the harpoon gun an entirely useless addition to the game. The scuba divers in the original game weren't necessarily challenging, and would even die from a single hit, but it was a cool idea, and I'd love to see this added in with a patch if possible. That being said, the AI overall is still a sizable improvement over their state in the previous 2020 release. Guards, for example, are now equipped with a new detection meter, making it more clear to the player when they're in view and about to be spotted. Standard enemies in combat will also somersault and run for cover, unlike before where they would basically just lightly jog straight towards the player. And the friendly AI no longer seem to get stuck during these brief escort scenarios making defending them far less tedious. Finally, let's wrap up with a brief sound comparison. Which game do you think offers the superior audio presentation? And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. 
Overall, the 13 remake is absolutely in a better state than it was back when it first released in 2020. The game now shares that iconic cell shaded art style that made the original game so unique for its time. Though unfortunately, the cutscenes from that previous attempt are still present, which offers a very disjointed art direction for the full game. Even still, the changes made to the visuals are a great step in the right direction, and do a decent job of completely transforming every location into something that looks like it came straight out of a comic book. The improvements made to character animations, the exaggerated effects, and the various quality of life additions to the gameplay are also worthy of praise, as they change just enough to feel modern without completely abandoning the feel of the original. However, there's definitely still plenty of room for improvement here, especially in cleaning up the AI pathing and reintroducing some visual elements like weather and volumetric lighting that didn't make the cut before. But what do you guys think? Has the 13 remake finally redeemed itself after its disastrous launch back in 2020, or do you still prefer the look and feel of that original 2003 classic? Let me know in the comments section. Also, I'd like to once again thank Microids for sponsoring this video. If you like what you saw here and want to give this remake a try for yourself, you can pick it up today on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series S or X, Nintendo Switch, Mac, or the PC. You can find a link to the store page in the description below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this posted every week.